All right. So I want to talk today about uh, the process of self-inquiry. And I want to share this with the intention of being able to be more transparent with my with myself and some of the things that I do that works for me. So I've been kind of tuning into what my blueprint is in my, my life and how I can serve better and I've uh, been going through a lot of upgrades. And one of the things that, I've, that, I've, that I'm learning is that um, I've been kind of holding back, sharing a lot of the things that are very dear and valuable to me, mainly because I didn't think anybody can understand it. You know, because the things that I'm experiencing and the things that I've been going through and I am going through, it's not very common and it's not very uh, relatable to many people. So, and I've been kind of trying to manipulate my experience so that other people can understand it. But I'm finding that it's better for me to just speak what my experience is and allow the people who can relate to that find the message or not find the message. Regardless, I can just share because that's my job and that's what feels good. So this is the spirit in which I'm sharing. So if you're not resonating to what I'm sharing, then, you know, this is not for you. But I, you know, presume there's going to be people who can resonate to and they will benefit from it, such as the people that I worked with in the past or I am working with right now or I will work in the future or some of the friends who are, um, you know, get something from it. So... One of the things that um, that I've done over, you know, the past few years, you know, it really was in 2014 that I discovered the process of self-inquiry. Until then, for the past like 10 years before that, my spiritual practice was, you know, practice of forgiveness. I was introduced to a AA process, um, Vipassana meditation, and just kind of realizing that there's more to this life than what I see. You know, there's more to my body than my body. I've also had some psychedelic experiences and ayahuasca experiences. So I had some spiritual um, awakening experiences in the past, but I always felt like, you know, I'm, I'm this person inside the world and very dense. I felt like there's this 3D world. Everything was so dense and solid. Um, but at some point in 2014, um, I literally had this, I was watching um, some of these non-dual videos and I was coming off a binge of some kind of a medicine. I was on some prescription thing. Um, and I was, it was in 2014, I believe, that I was just having, you know, one of those binges where you just kind of take off from the world. And I was just kind of doing my own thing. And then uh, next thing you know, or I think it was 2013, actually, I was just came back from traveling from like Asia. And I was kind of in a very negative, like low state, you know. And funny enough, a lot of my spiritual awakening moments have been in one of the darkest moments of my life. There's been in the times when I felt really low, I felt very almost depressed like, and I was kind of in an escape mode, you know, when you just watch a bunch of Netflix and I was actually watching a bunch of porn at the time and I had just come off like a whole, whole porn binge and I just was really tired actually. And so I was watching like, like uh, non-dual videos on spirituality, which has been actually a pattern of mine, you know, over the years, you know, even, even 15 years ago, I would go out and partying and doing drugs and sleeping around and I would come home really defeated, tired, exhausted. Um, all my shame and guilt programming were all bubbling up. All my, I should have done that. I shouldn't have done that. Thoughts would come up. And then that's how I actually discovered spirituality to begin with. It was through suffering. It was through feeling of guilt and shame and doing things that, I didn't want to do, but I kept doing, and it felt like they're kind of out of control. So I started to listen to a lot of Alan Watts, and, and that was amazing. But anyway, to going back, I had a similar thing happen in 2013 when I, when I woke up to the process of self-inquiry, and I woke up to the awareness that, that I am the awareness that is aware of my experience. And, you know, like, I don't know, I don't know who sees this or what you hear me say when I, when I say this, but I just want to share that there is there is hearing what I share and there is the experience of what I share. And the experience of what I share is very, very mystical. It's a very mystical experience to realize that everything that I am is, everything that I am is not what it seems and the reality of that which I am is actually invisible and is present. And this can be very, very experienced, like tangible. 
and the and the reality of it once it dawns on us it really it's the most interesting thing in the world and there is a joy and there is a freedom and there is a sense of love and unity and unbelievable mystery that's just mind-boggling literally the mind cannot continue so I, I, I was introduced to this process in 2014 and then I kept forgetting, I kept going back, etc. But what I noticed is this, is that there's two states, um, they call it the, there's like three states actually. One is when we are feeling really low, right, feeling depressed, feeling down, feeling pessimistic. One is when we feel really excited, motivated, pumped and passionate. And one is when we are completely uh, grounded and aware of the truth. The first two are not ideal for awakening, for realizing who we are. Now, what happens in my experience of life, I've always you know, had most of my awakenings during my lowest lows. So when I cr crash or bad things happen, or when I say bad things, just unpleasant things that I don't want, or suffering, right? When suffering comes, I have been you know, not just me, but this seems to be a pattern, is that when suffering, suffering comes, um, I start to go through a transformation process. And through this transformation process, I wake up to a state of complete peacefulness and awakening up to who I am. And then from that state, the challenge for me has been to remain in that state. But what happens, and this is one of my insights, is that when I become aware of who I am and I become very sovereign, I stop giving my uh, power away to objects, relationships, activities, businesses, and I stop caring what people think of me. I stop caring, you know, um, I, start, I, stop, I stop investing my happiness outside of me. But what happens is when I do that, then I become sovereign, I become powerful, I become creative, I become attractive, and then I attract to myself a bunch of goodness relationship, money, businesses. But what I notice is when I do that, this is when the second temptation comes in a sense. And that is the temptation that all of a sudden I am now on this, all these pleasures have been added onto my life. And I kind of, you know, they call it pussy gas for lack of a better word. But it's like when you have sex or you just like have a lot of money or all that, all these doors open to you where like the temptation or the, or the lust for pleasure and freedom pulls me from the path of remaining aware of who I essentially am, living a life of simplicity, living a life of discipline, honoring my routines. And this is a very, very awesome insight that I had that is happening, that is becoming aware of the patterns so according to Buddhist teaching, actually, there are five enemies. One is, sick, is lust. This is craving for pleasure. Just to give you an example, you know, if, you ever, if you're a chocolate lover, there are some people who can have a bite of chocolate and then put, it, put the rest in their drawer, and every week they can come back and they can have a little more chocolate. Well, not everybody can do that. Some people... You know, they love chocolate so much. If they have one bite, they have to finish the entire package, right? And this, and we all have that in different areas. Some of us have it with money. Some of us have it with sex. Some of us have it with work, right? So when something is good, we, we become identified with it and we want more and more of it. That's, that's what I'm talking about, lust. It's not just sex. So the five enemies is that's the one of them. The other one is anger or aversion. This is when something bad happens and, you know, we react and fuck you comes up. You know, my friend Wade calls it your inner fuck you comes up. And that is when you just say fuck you and you just change plans. You leave, you leave relationships, you leave, you leave businesses, you leave people. You just close things down and you, you know, burn bridges. And I used to be really proud of that, actually. I used to think that's actually a really good thing. I was like, that's it, I'm done. And in that state of anger, you feel like you're very powerful. But actually, that's a big, big mistake because when we make decisions from anger and reaction, we are the victim. We are becoming a victim of that situation. So a true revolution, a true change can only be true when it's coming from a peaceful state of calmness. 
This is a great insight thanks to Richard Rudd that he really awakened this in me is that true revolutionary is not a reactionary. Most revolutionaries that we see are the people who are really angry at the government or angry at this and that, and they just go out in the street and they create, create a riot, but they're actually not revolutionaries, they're reactionaries. So if you want to really revolutionize our life, we want to make a change, we want to make sure we do it from a place of total peace, not from a place of total frustration and resentment. And this was confusing the heck out of me for many years because, you know, Tony Robbins has, has this, uh, I listened to Tony Robbins before, and he was talking about how um, if you're frustrated, great. You know, you got to be honest with yourself. You know, how fat is your ass? Your ass is bigger than Chicago, like jo jokingly. But he was saying that frustration is a good thing because it makes you to change. But what I'm learning is that that kind of change is not, is not coming from, a, from, a play, from the right space. Because if you're, if you're making the change from a sense of lack and frustration, whatever we do is going to come from that place. So what I'm learning to do now is that we bring serenity and acceptance and love to the situation and we extract benefit and we extract wisdom from it. And then in that state of acceptance, then we make a decision from a place of peace rather than from a place of hate. So the sensual pleasures, the, um, the other one was anger. And the third one is agitation and, and there's tiredness and there's doubt any of those ones but this is what i was going to say is that a lot of the insights that i've had like especially around self-inquiry followed with a lot of fortune positive fortune and then i totally forget about who i am because the pleasures of the senses and the excitement and the possibilities they just kind of boom it's almost like winning the lottery you know it's like you've been it's like you've been doing such a great you've been meditating every day you've been working out every day and all of a sudden you win the lottery and you have like a multi 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 millionaire and you just cannot stop yourself from traveling and eating and and doing this and that and just your life just takes off in a, in a negative sense because you don't have the self-discipline you're not grounded into who you are so this has kind of been the pattern that i've noticed in the past few years for me um and what i want to talk today is, to you is about this secret pleasure this secret pleasure that I'm publicly sharing with you, and that is really, 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 really becoming curious on who we actually are as a solution to our, um, like, finding peace. You know, this has been for me is that there has been times in my life where because of my businesses or relationships and my mental thinking too much, it has been very, very unpleasant and the mind just constantly worrying or thinking or trying to solve problems or anger, right? And the process of self-inquiry has been, has been like, a, it's almost been like a, like a secret doorway out of the matrix. And I know it sounds interesting, but you have to try it. So if this resonates, you have to try it. And the way you try it is you become curious, what is self-inquiry? And you start to really, really like invest time and energy into it. And just like anything that's worth learning, it takes some time. You know, if you just look at calculus at the beginning, you don't understand what it is. It just says calculus. It seems very odd and, and strange. But if you start, you know, with one plus one is two and then go learn algebra and then put it all together, you can eventually get to calculus. And then you're actually able to like do all kinds of calculations that previously you weren't able to do. And then you can like build engines and you can design stuff and you can actually make a system that's useful to you. In the same way, when we are learning about self-inquiry, discovering who we actually are, we need some prerequisites. One of the prerequisites is a, is a, is a quiet and concentrated mind. So some of the disciplines of Vipassana, you know, yoga, all those things are a pre preparatory, preparatory work. They focus the attention, they calm the mind, and they bring us to a state of being able to actually focus. And then from that place, the investigation continues into who we actually are. And then we start to really investigate um, our sense of self. You know, what is it? What is this I? You know, the way I've, I've, I used to do this, I listened to a lot of teachers, non-dual teachers, Rupert Spiro, Bentino Massaro, Muji, um, Francis Lucini. Um, there, are, there are many, right? And through these conversations, these people's voice are coming from a sense of awareness. So even though on the intellectual level, sometimes I may have not understood what they're saying, and I don't sometimes, 
but on the vibration level, something in my heart understands. And then, and this is what happened in 2014, in that one moment, boom, I got it. And then again, there are other moments that I got it and I got it and I got it. And just like um, Jim Carrey has a video, he says that, you know, a few years ago, he sees Eckhart Tolle and he's like, man, like I just got it. I know what it's like. I know what I am. I know what presence is. And he says, since that day, every single day, I've been trying to get back to that state. But it is, it is an amazing awareness to have. And I, and I know if you're watching this video or if you're on the path of self-discovery and self, uh, if, you're, if you're really like serious about your awakening, you are going to get there and you're going to get it. And, you, and myself, I'm, um, I'm going to be more, more in it you know, and be less tripped over by, by what I'm not. You know, by the sense of uh, by the sense of separation, by the sense of the character in the story, that that somehow trips me over to believing that, you know, I'm lacking this, or I don't have that, or I should have this to be happy, or I'm I'm located inside the body, and the world is made out of these things called matter, and all these belief systems that I've been picked up. So, I wanted to do this video to bring you to my world, and one of the things that I do in my world is I shut down the world. And that is, I literally shut off the world and I close my mind and my everything from the world. And I go into the very quiet inner discovery place where it's just me. And that includes waking up in the morning at 4 a.m. That includes fasting, that includes water fasting, that includes meditations. But ultimately, it includes becoming really interested to discovering deeper of who I am. And having tasted it extensively in the past, uh, and I forgot it again, I know that I can always go there again. So in order for, for me to really you know, dive deep in a sense, sometimes extended time and focus is required. It's almost like there's this, there's this deep water and I have to like dive deep and go inside the ocean. And then as I go deep in the deep waters, that's when I experience this thing that I'm talking to you about. So the experience of self-inquiry is, is a contemplative work that is initiated through certain conversations, through talks by different enlightened people that are on YouTube and available now, and it's much easier now. But it's ultimately for us to become really curious who it is that I actually am, and recognition that who I actually am is not a, it's not a solid entity, it's not inside the body. And everything that I see is made out of me, and it's in me, and it's one with me. And there's a lot of joy and, 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 and bless in that instant awareness of it. So, yeah, that's what I wanted to do, share today. And sometimes in order to, to, in order to get there, because we are so, like, depending on, depending on what state of consciousness I'm in, right? Sometimes I, I may be, like, in such an excited state of mind that my mind is too gross, it can't, it can't see the subtlety of the self. So in those times, then it's really, really helpful to just fast or just go on a retreat, you know, go on a meditation retreat for a couple of days, uh, do some Dhamma service or just like do a water fast or sometimes there has been many times where I was living with my family or living with family members, you know, um, I was living with my grandmother, I just literally told her, I was like, you know, I. I'm not going to talk for the whole weekend and I'm just going to be in my room all day. And I call it silence day. And it's amazing if you just stop talking to people, what happens? Like we just stop having to say, hi, how are you? We just, we just stop. And we just stop going out and we stop, think, we, stop, we stop having to do all these things that we think we have to do. We don't. You know, I honestly believe that water fasting and silence meditation can heal everything including back pain, including disease, including financial issues, including girlfriend issues, anything, any psychological, physiological error, error problem or pain. Because, because ultimately, who we essentially are is divine, is, 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 a, is a supernatural thing that we are. We are actually supernaturals. You know? and, and silence enables us to reconnect with who we actually are. And let go of who we are not. And fasting enables us to cleanse the body from all the shit 
that we've consumed and made ourselves addicted to that has made our body go out of balance. So self-inquiry, fasting, and meditation are my secret gifts and secret blessings that I wanted to bring to your life. But just like buying a treadmill or hiring a personal trainer or getting the best protein shake in the planet will not help you at all. It will not help you lose a single pound unless you get on that treadmill, unless you eat that cookie or protein shake, or unless you listen to those advice. So in the same way, if something I shared with you will only get you to feel it by you really prioritizing you know, yourself, your silence time, your fasting time, your meditation time, and then stretching yourself. Yes, it is, it is, it is not easy. It is not easy. I'm telling you, it's not easy. Oh my God, it's not easy. Deciding to fast. Within eight hours, okay, my mind says, oh, I'm so hungry. I need to eat. You know, by, by 16 hours, I'm starting to, like, crave food, and I hate the idea of fasting. And I'm like, why am I even doing this? Is this even working? You know, it's not easy. Or waking up at 4 a.m. The first day is fun. The second day is like, oh, my God, I'm so tired. And then at nighttime, you want to stay up longer. It's not easy. But when we do that, something else emerges it's like a new quality is added to our life and we cannot know this unless we go there because if you could know what it's like to be there you would have already done it a long time ago but the, the thing is it's an unknown we're going to the unknown territory it's like places we've never been so it's very unfamiliar it requires faith and courage and perseverance and patience and trust and surrender and renunciation and all those qualities that is required to be able to actually go there. This is why I love the 10 perfections. This is why I posted, if you look at my Facebook page below, I have this thing says 10 perfections. The 10 perfections are what we actually need in order to be able to become more uh, skilled at awakening to who we are. Because we've been so confused by laziness, by bad habits, by having no willpower, by getting frustrated easily, not having energy, that we don't, we don't have the enough, we don't have the tools in a sense to go for it. That's why I wrote those down and each and every day, I'm starting to read this out loud. And here's the secret, there's another secret. And the secret is, and this is by a guy, Richard Rudd. I highly recommend Richard Rudd, he's an awesome wise wise man he's a wise man you know richard rudd author of jinkies he talks about that every prayer that you constantly repeat from the bottom of your heart if it's coming from your soul it's bound to come to realization it's bound to come to realization so if you write down like i don't know if you saw but i've written down those 10 perfections i just love it you know it's like it says something like, may I, may I li lead a simple life and develop the quality of renunciation. If you just say that every morning when you wake up, it, it does something to you. It doesn't just, it's not just worse, it's something actually changes. That means we develop the capacity to renounce the non-essentials and to go after essentials. The non-essential is anything that takes us out of the present moment. The non-essential is anything that takes me out of the present moment inside the mundane, chasing for short-term pleasures. The Netflixes, the YouTubes, the chocolates, the porn, the wasting conversations. And the essentials are things that bring me into the present moment, brings me one with thou, and it connects me to something beautiful and fulfilling, and it's self-fulfilling. So the, non the essentials is anything that connects me to who I essentially am. Creativity, expression of love, things that are coming from the soul, exercising, dancing, singing, hanging with wise company, reading quality books, silence, fasting, things like that. Yes. Ah. 
I think that's all. <sighs> yeah, that's what I was saying is that at first it's not easy. So it comes with a sense of there is the right effort. That's what Buddha talks about, the right effort. So at first we start meditating or doing fasting. It takes, it takes serious craziness to actually like do these things. You know, it takes, it takes serious, serious desire. It takes something. It's actually, a, it's actually the hand of grace. If somebody is actually able to sit down and meditate and willing to listen and do it, it's an act of grace because on our own, on our own self, by ourselves, on our own ego operated program, unconscious, nobody wants to sit down and meditate. Nobody wants to give up good food. Nobody, I like food just as much as everybody else. You know, I like tasty food. I like watching those videos. I liked watching those movies. I love it just as much as anybody else. But something else touches us through experiences of suffering or through hand of grace or through being spiritually mature. Something changes on us, which is different than most people because we're all blossoming at different times. But something touches us and somehow we start losing interest for the mundane and we become really, really, really determined to go to what we have not known. And through those experiences, then we commit, we feel the inner guidance that says fast or go on a silence retreat or work with this or do that. And then we take that yes, and then we go towards it. And then we go through the, through the heroic journey. You know, at first we get invited and we reject the call. You know, you may have been invited to go to Vipassana a few times and you rejected the call or go to this meditation or work with this teacher or work with that or fast, but you rejected the call. But then through rep repetition and through suffering, you know, you realize, okay, the heck with it, I'm going to do this. And then you go for it and you go for the, for the silence retreat. You go, you sign up for it, you do the work, you start meditating, you go for the teacher and fasting and all that. And you, you get some results, but ultimately you fail. And you give up and you try to renounce the call, but the call will not go away. They say in Zen, you know, once you, once you discover enlightenment, it's like eating, a, it's like eating um, something like a coal you, and it sticks to your mouth or it's like eating um, mercury or some of those things that you, when you put in your mouth, it doesn't go down, it doesn't come up, it just gets stuck. So in the same way, when you hear about self-inquiry and realizing who you actually are and self-awakening and realization and empowerment of who you actually are, you may go on the path, but it doesn't make sense. It's, it's, it's challenging and we give up. But we cannot never give up because we cannot go back to the ordinary way of living anymore. And then we become, you know, in a sense, helpless to move forward. So that we go back to the call and then we try again, then we fast again, we meditate again, we go on retreats again, we surrender again, we give things up again. And then we have certain insights and realizations and somehow we get the beginner's luck and we start to wake up to something greater than ourselves. And let me tell you, nothing is more ecstatic and joyful to realizing who we actually are. Nothing in the world is more, more awesome. No movie, no game, no chocolate, no sex. Nothing is more exciting and more empowering, more free. Not exciting is not the right word. Nothing is more interesting. Nothing is more interesting. And again, interesting is not even the right word. Nothing is more valuable. Nothing is more valuable than discovering who we actually are. Although it is interesting too, but it doesn't have too much to be interested about. It's just, it's, it's just, an, it's just being who we are. It's so empowering because when we are who we are, when we stop identifying with the program, See, is this recording stuff? When we stop identifying with the program, life becomes the flow of thou. Life becomes the flow of thou. That means we are one with the thou. And what's more interesting than to be part of something greater? You know, our sense of lack and sense of fear is coming because we believe you're a person separate and apart from the source. But when we, when we actually run with the source, all of a sudden life has a new meaning I just uh, opened up this one and I'm just seeing all the, oh my God, look at all these, look at all these notes. I haven't read any of your comments. Uh, hey, Adrian, good to see you, brother, and everybody else. Yeah. Um. <laughs> anyway, 
I just wanted to kind of share my love of self-inquiry with you today. And um, Adrian here, my friend, he's also in love with self-inquiry. Um, and I'm sure as well as other, uh, other of you guys who are also doing the, doing the work, you know what I'm talking about. But, you know, in my experience, there, had, there are times when I really put in time and energy into this. All of a sudden, like, it's almost like there's a lens of bliss that takes over my experience. It's like I could be in a coffee shop sitting down and all of a sudden I know something and it's right there. Or I go to a yoga class or I'm just like talking to my family or whatever. It's just like life is the same, but it's not the same. You know, it's like in Zen they say you when you wake up, everything is the same except it's two inches off the ground. And these are all symbolic. It's not actual. But, but I just wanted to really like bring you to my world, to the things that I normally don't talk about. Um, and I just want you to, I hope whoever sees this, to be inspired to really prioritize to the essentials because our life is like a dream that will, it's like the dream last night. You know, you see a dream and you wake up and it seems like it was very real. And you see all the people in your dream the girls, the people, the sex, whatever, it seems really real. But then you wake up from the dream, you realize that everything was made out of your mind. It was all made out of mindset. There was no girl there. There was no people there. There was no walls there. It was all inside our mind. But when we wake up, all of a sudden we presume that this is real. We presume that this, this glass is actually real because I can touch it. But actually... This is an appearance in my consciousness and this is temporary. It is constantly changing and sooner or later it will vanish from sight. And when it vanishes, it is gone. And real is the definition of something that doesn't disappear. So that which disappears is temporary, is not real. And that which is lasting and ongoing is real. So what is in our experience that is lasting and ongoing is this sense of I am, is the I, is the consciousness that we are. And we can actually really um, have an experience of this, not just understanding it intellectually, but actually really, really feeling the significance of it and what it actually means and how it influences our relationships and how it influences our, our voice tone and how it influences our reactions when something doesn't work. And it, it changes everything, you know? It's like one of my teachers, Rupert Spiro, says if we have if the entire world for two hours could just sit in a room without social media, without any distraction, and just sit for two hours, we would have world peace in an hour. We would have world peace. If everybody just gets this self-inquiry. So if you resonate to this, do the work because the world is waiting for you and me to embody this understanding and then we embody this understanding through the good and bad through the money challenges and through wealth and through loneliness and through absolutely in love with our perfect partner through you know health and through disease if you're able to be aware of this i and the truth of it and not forget it and remain aware of it then we are doing what we can for the evolution of consciousness and, and everything and only good will come out of it through our services, through our presence, through our, through our vibration and we are up, up leveling the level of the sea for humanity. Awesome. Thank you so much everyone. Adrian, thank you so much for uh, all your comments. I haven't read it but I will look at it after. Thank you everyone and I will see you soon. Bye-bye.